Electroplating, a technique used through the centuries for various purposes, such as coating fake jewelry with gold and then selling it for the price of gold. But I'm sure none of my loyal viewers would ever do such a thing. That's right. Today I bring you another video in which I will go through a tutorial how to electroplate metal with other types of metal. So the materials which you will need for this are an acid, most acids work, vinegar works, and acetic acid, muriatic acid works, a sacrificial metal, I'll be using copper wiring in my case because I'll be coating with copper. The thing which you'll be coating, I'll be coating this zinc washer with copper plating and a little bowl where I can actually keep the mixture of already poured vinegar inside of it. And finally you will need some seat belts because this tutorial is about to kick off. So to jump right in, you need to make a salt of the metal which you're going to be using. Uh, you need to send the sacrificial metal to its doom. This is pretty simple. You put the copper wiring or the copper scraps into the bowl with uh, acetic acid. So it can all dissolve and burn in the air. Uh, this process, however, unfortunately, takes a while. If you're gonna use uh, copper carbonate, like I have here, this is a much faster process. I went through how to make that in another video. Check it out. We also need a very concentrated solution, so make sure all of the vinegar dissolves a good deal of this copper, so it is really blue. Uh, if it's not blue enough, we'll have to boil it to make the coating, the galvanization of the metal, actually worth it. So there's no burning occurring inside of this. Burning is when a bit of metal gets oxidized or something. Uh, basically, when it, instead of coating, it just messes up the whole thing. So because I don't have much to wait, I will uh, get this, pour this into the vinegar. This will become uh, copper hydroxide, no copper acetate in a short period of time. While we await, we can discuss uh, why we need galvanization, what's the processes, what's the uses for electroplating. Electroplating is mainly used to cover something with a layer of another metal. For example, if you find a necklace on the street and you're hoping it's gold and it turns out to just be plain copper or like plain aluminum or iron or something well with electroplating you can slap away the it is what it is and galvanize it with a layer of gold so with enough gaslighting you'll actually be able to convince yourself that it's actually gold and you'll be able to cope with poorness better so you may be wondering, why not just buy a real one? Well, because we're chemists and we love doing stupid things. Why do something simple when you can overcomplicate it to the point it gives you a brain aneurysm? Uh, my channel is like an addictive substance, except instead of any so harmful side effects, it gives you a will to overcomplicate things and to do stupid things in general. If you don't have copper carbonate or hydroxide, basic malachite as I do, uh, you'll just need to leave copper wiring inside of the vinegar solution for a few days. However, I have a little bit, so I'll leave it in there for a few hours. Uh, if there's not enough, I'll have to, I'll be forced to leave it for a few days. Uh, so I'll be back when I actually have enough copper acetate dissolved inside of the water for a good amount of Electroplate. One hour later. Now that we have a decently ready solution of copper acetate, I waited a few hours, most of it is dissolved, turned into copper acetate. Now that we have the solution ready, uh, we will need to boil it so no burning occurs during the electroplating process. Now, what specifically is burning, you may be asking? Well, to answer that question, over here I have a paper clip. It's funny iron, it's half a paper clip. As you can see, that end is. Shiny, it's definitely iron. So now place this into the solution and electroplate this. So we have an electroplating setup right now. I'm not actually electroplating it, I'm just demonstrating what burning is, is like. So we put in a fully iron paper clip, nothing on it. And if I were to take it out, I just put it in, like right before I began recording this clip. So it's been there for like, what, 20 seconds or so? Uh, if I were to take this out, 
As you can see, it darkened a lot. It's kind of hard to see this. It darkened a lot, and with the stuff which is on it, that is not copper. This is not what you want. This occurs when the solution is not concentrated enough with the copper salts. So, to concentrate it right now, I would need to boil it, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Unless it's a dark blue, it's not good enough. So to begin concentrating the solution, uh, you would need to boil it. I here poured it into a flask, a slightly bigger flask. The flask specifically needs to be made out of glass, so no pots or pans. Because uh, copper acetate or acetic acid, when heated up, becomes a lot more reactive and it will end up just dissolving your iron pan. So here I have a slightly bigger flask, uh, the last one completely shattered when I try to distill methanol. So I will now leave it in there until there is a lot less liquid inside because the way to do this is to evaporate over the liquid. Uh, if you're going to do this and you still think you have a little bit of vinegar left inside of it, just try not to breathe it in. Vinegar fumes are quite... And pleasant. I figured this out in the experimental way. Oh yeah, make sure not to burn it because copper acetate can decompose into copper carbonate, I think. It's hard to find the decomposition for copper acetate online. I think it decomposes into copper carbonate. Anyway, yeah, just don't overheat it. Uh, just until there's a little bit of liquid still left. The detonation part is over. We have this blue copper solution. As you can see, it's much more dark than it than it was before, and there's much less because I boiled most of the water out. Uh, if you can take a close look, you can even see there's a little bit of crystals forming. So this thing is saturated right now. So now that the solution is mostly done, we need to electroplate these two washers. I put a wire around this one, but as you can see, they're just about the same color. They're the same type of washer. I guess this one was just exposed to air a little bit more. But they're both zinc coated and the same type of washer. So I will now dip this, one of these washers, into the solution. And because I don't have much of the solution, I kind of need to balance it. So it's fully submerged in this. This may be a bit hard. Now that I actually succeed in submerging the zinc uh, snatch inside of the solution, uh, we need to electrocute this. We need to subjugate it to Nikola Tesla's wrath. Uh, I will do this by making the, the zinc nut uh, negative and copper positive, uh, attach it all to a battery, which is surprising because copper is usually negative in other electrolytic processes. So now that I have successfully managed to hook up the wires in the worst way possible, uh, you can see that everything is hooked up exactly as I said. The copper side is hooked up to the positive and the zinc nut is hooked up to the negative side of the battery. There's a little bit of bubbles forming around the anode that would be hydrogen. No, around the cathode, that would be hydrogen and stuff. So yeah, uh, I will just leave this thing like this, electroplating for like half an hour. Uh, I'll come back then, I'll give you the results off of that. I lied. That wasn't 30 minutes, that was just 15 minutes. Anyway, I'm back in 15 minutes and as you can see the screw, the washer, is looking a much different color. I'll just disattach the wires. Uh, and as you can see, the washer has a much more brown, yet kind of pinkish color. It's the color of this copper. Darkened, because there was a bit of burning occurring. This is the normal screw right over here. I'm guessing the concentration wasn't sufficient enough. But if the concentration was sufficient enough, uh, it would be much different. You can see that there is a little bit of good copper plating. Uh, there might be a little bit of copper placing underneath. They can probably scratch this layer off to see because the layer is as thin. All right, so I finished the process and as you can see, one of the screws is electroplated while the other one isn't. Uh, the one which is electroplated, it looks a lot like rust. Except if you would shine a light on it on the top, you can see that it looks a lot like copper. So it's just in a light 
trick of the camera. So after I'm done the electroplating, uh, I noticed a few things. So uh, there's a lot of burning oak here, and it's not pure copper. So for finishing notes, for anyone who wants to do this, uh, you would need a lot more solution. Also, the layer is very thin, so leave it in there for a little over 15 minutes if you want to electrolyze a car part, like, I don't know, something iron which rusts easily. And also increase the distance I've, between the electrodes. I found that that helps a lot to stop the prevention of iron oxide or any type of burning. So right as I was getting this out of the bath, I quickly came to a realization. Because this, uh, the burning is made up of iron oxide, perhaps I could dunk it in vinegar and see how all that works. Anyway, it's a dunk it in vinegar and it actually worked out surprisingly well. Uh, most of the burning has been cleared off and I've been left with this copper-like screw, copper-like nut here. Uh, it's very smooth, there's hardly any more burning on it. So over here I have just a piece of iron scrap, because of course I have iron scraps. As you can see, it's much more rusty than this. Uh, if we were to bring up a copper wire beside it, its own electrode, you can see that their color, especially right over here, is quite similar. So, uh, yeah, you can conclude that this is, in fact, copper because of its shiny aura. Anyway, uh, the layer over here is very thin, so if you want to uh, galvanize a car part to keep it from rusting, you need to keep it in there for a little over just 15 minutes. So anyway, that's it for today. Uh, see ya. Don't stick your finger in the solution.